Today, we are here with one of my clients, Zubair. He has a kiosk inside of this mall. Now, I know so many people who are out there who want to open their own bubble tea shop are afraid of getting a large brick and mortar. And so a kiosk, which is about a quarter or half of the size of a normal boba shop working area, is a good option for you. However, what we'll learn from Zubair today is that it does come with a lot of setbacks and maybe some hurdles to get over. We'll definitely get into that. And I just want to remind you that we are in a very, very busy mall. There's music, people, it's very, very busy. So if you hear any background noise, just bear that in mind. Zubair, thanks so much for having me today. I am super excited to be here and congratulations on opening your very first bubble tea kiosk. Please feel free to share as much as you want about your journey and how you've gotten to this point and some of the things you've encountered. And I'm sure our viewers at home would love to hear all about it. Hi, Christian. Thanks for being here. It's quite a privilege to have you here. Bubble tea business, it's been quite a journey, but I've been here just because of your help. I was only trying to get to know about bubble tea because I would see it on TikTok. It's, it was quite a popular drink. And I suddenly came up with a video of yours and then I got into your channel. I've been seeing a lot of the videos. And that's how, I mean, I was like, why not just start a business? I mean, if it's getting so popular, why not just get into it? And then I got in touch with you and thanks for all of the support. In the middle, I had a lot of hurdles, which actually made me go back into not opening it. But I mean, with your help, I'm here. I mean, I'm quite proud of it and everything. Thank you very much again. Yeah, you're very, very welcome. Um, I'm so happy that I could be a part of your journey because I do feel like from my experience, um, a lot of people, when they encountered a lot of those setbacks and difficulties, they probably would have given up. And I think that's one reason why a lot of boba shops fail is they try, they have a lot of issues and they just go, you know what, I can't deal with this. But you've encountered the same issues and if not more than most bubble tea shop owners. So would you mind sharing about some of those with everyone? Of course I can. I mean, here at this shopping center, we had a lot of problems. I mean, in a lot of the shopping center, people have water issues, drainage issues and electric problems. We had them here. Theoretically, it was not that hard. I mean, we thought we would just overcome the problems very easily. But I mean, when it came to practical life, it was much harder than what it looks like. We had encountered a lot of problems. There's one big problem that the staff had to leave in the middle. They didn't turn up to work. And uh, that was because of the water problem because they had to actually drain the wastewater and then bring in fresh water into the chaos. That was a big problem as well. But I mean, along the time, along the line, with every single day, we were learning a lot and we were eager to learn more and more. And that's what helped us, that's what pushed us. I mean, the more you uh, effort you put into it, the more it will become easier for you. Right now, we still have a water issue, we still have electric issue, but we are doing extremely well. The turnout has been incredible. I mean, a lot more than what we expected. And Zubair's shop has only been open for one month. It's called Bubble Boutique here in Oxford. Would you mind sharing with us a little bit about the area? It's a shopping center called Templar Square. There are a nice uh, variety of shops here and outside it's got a retail park. It's got a lot of influx of people coming here because of the Bubble Boutique. Uh, it's been a month since we opened, but the menu has been up there uh, for two weeks now. Yeah, in the first two weeks where we didn't have a menu up here, we had lines of people coming up here. And then after that, they've become our regular customers. They're actually you know, asking us, uh, we are going to be having loyalty program as well where every single one of them are asking for loyalty cards. That's really interesting because you basically found a very popular city, Oxford, very densely populated, a lot of people, but instead of opening it in the center, you opened it in an area that is also very populated with a lot of people. There's like schools, a lot of kids are running around, you know, school just got out, but they don't have a bubble tea yet. So you literally are representing bubble tea in this area. And you're what I like to call a community bubble tea shop. You're building rapport with your customers. Everyone knows about you. They're talking about you. They're requesting loyalty programs. I mean, that's really, really cool. A lot of people, when they come here, they actually heard it from somebody else because we haven't actually advertised on the internet. And when they come here, they actually, first of all, they like her drinks and they're like, we are the closest one to them. And the reason why, I mean, we are the first bubble tea shop open here is because a lot of people were not opening and it was because of the water problem. Now that we have overcome, I mean, a lot of people would be opening the shops as well because it is doable. I mean, you put your effort into it, be programmed, 
organized and you'll be able to follow. But before the water, you got to have to think about the electric. If you have that in place, it's doable 100%. And about the small place where you can dump the wastewater and fill the buckets with the clean water. That's really interesting. So I know that you were mentioning uh, beforehand, before we started filming, that uh, the, the big things that you just mentioned was the electric, uh, the water, and one thing that we didn't touch on was the staff. So we'll get to the staff later, but first let's start with the electrics because I feel like that really is a big part of uh, the bubble tea kiosk situation and also the water, the water, fresh water in and the wastewater out. Maybe in a minute you can kind of walk us through your water situation behind the scenes, um, but if you just want to kind of uh, verbally walk us through kind of what the issues are and how you're overcoming them and then where you want to kind of go with it in the future. Water usage is a lot in the bubble tea kiosk. If you don't have drainage system, it's going to make it a lot, a lot, a lot difficult. In some places, yeah, where you have the drainage system, it's quite easier. I mean, it's it's an effort here, but I mean, it will work. It totally depends on how you cope with it. Right now, we have dirty water bucket, which is about 50 liters, which we got from uh, Argos. That made it a lot easier, which we can easily carry it and just dump all of the wastewater. And the fresh water, we have a, a pump system installed inside that, which is very easy. It's very easy. I mean, the only problem that we get at the moment is just carrying the fresh water into the chaos and taking the wastewater out to drain it. How do your staff know or do you have a system in place for them to know when to refill the fresh water and when to take out the waste? First, it was every single hour we had to check it. But right, right now, they are so trained that they know when the water is finished. When they look at the bucket there with the water, if it emptied twice, then we know we had to throw the wastewater. So that's how we know. And along with the time, we know how to make use of the water efficiently. Yeah, so that's making it a lot easier for us. Right, and I think you were mentioning about the water system that you have in place right now. Uh, which ties into the electrics, right? Which is another one of the issues. So usually the water is connected to electricity. It comes up through the pipe and through the, uh, the tap, the sink unit. But because the electric is really low, yeah. you're doing a gravity feed right now. Yeah. When you have more amps for the electricity, then you'll be able to hook up the whole system with the water. But right now it's gravity fed. I mean, the water is not the only issue that, you know, when it comes to the kiosk, it's electric as well. Some of the shopping centers, they're only limited to providing you only 16 amps. If you want another line, which costs a lot. I mean, most of the shopping center, they only provide you 16 amps. 13 amps is only the water boiler. If you're installing a water system, you gotta have electric uh, in your mind as well, which has to be over. I mean, ideally it has to to be 32 or 48 amps 48 amps the, the higher the better because obviously you ha you'd have ice machine in there a lot of fridges and the shaker machine and the boiler which needs a lot of electricity as well so that's a, an issue on the side as well so if you have the electric system in place properly with higher amp then the water system is not going to be a, a, a bigger issue okay so let's make a note of the things that you have back here that use electricity so we don't want to leave off the boba cooker, right? So however you're cooking boba, that uses electricity. Making the tea, that's gonna use a lot of electricity in the morning to uh, make water hot in order to brew it. Then you've got your future ice machine. So once the electricity's sorted, you're gonna get uh, water in, waste out, and electric for the ice machine. Ceiling machine uses a lot of electricity, a lot. Shaker machine, if you decide to use that, that uses a lot of electricity. He's actually using a blender unit, which we'll show you in just a second. Um, that uses a lot of electricity as well, but it's not an ongoing usage. It's an on and off type usage. The refrigerators, you've got two uh, industry size fridges. Eventually, we're going to have a toppings bar on there as well. That's going to use some electricity. And of course, the point of service, the EPOS, that does use some electricity, but it doesn't use a huge amount. And then last but not least, the water system in terms of actually pumping the water and heating it, because of course, you got to have hot water uh, to clean stuff and to wash your hands. Am I forgetting any electricity? <laughs> I think that's about it. Okay, so you can see why electricity is super, super important. And like you were saying, they only supply a certain amount. Then you have to pay extra for more. Or is that something that maybe can be negotiated with like your rent or lease? It depends on the shopping center because sometimes they won't allow you more than 16 or 32 amps because that's what their allowance is per kiosk and they don't want to overload the whole of the system. But with uh, our shopping center, thankfully, they will provide us extra 
but along with time and they would charge us a lot of money for that. The way we are using our electric at the moment is a bit tricky because we plug in one thing and the plug out another thing. So that's how we are working with it, which is quite time consuming. Some of the stuff which is taking a lot of electric water boiler, the sealing machine, and when we are making tapioca 3000 kilowatts, so that on its own is taking a lot of electric. So first of all, if you have the electric system in place, the proper electric with the high amps, and then, you know, with the water, it's workable. But if there is water system that you can work out with and there's less electric, it's not gonna work. Right, and talking about that water system uh, in terms of cleaning, I think you have access to a small sort of commissary area, uh, kind of a, another sink with a drain and all that. Oh, without that bit, it would have been impossible. Totally impossible, it's not, it's, it wouldn't have been workable. But I mean, thankfully we have that bit over there and uh, the shopping center said they're gonna improve it for us to make it easier for us to drain water and to fill the water buckets. And that is very important. If any shopping center haven't got a place like that, it is impossible to work with it. So just to confirm for the water in and waste out, you have two separate containers and then the staff have like a trolley and then they just trolley back and forth uh, a few times a day. And of course, at the very end of the day, they're definitely emptying out all the wastewater. We're emptying the, uh, the wastewater bucket and filling out the other clean water buckets. Uh, during the weekdays, we only need to do it at the end of the day. But during the weekends, we have to do it twice a day. And for that, for weekdays, we need two staff. And for weekends, we need three staff. Yeah, without that, it's... It's very hard, yeah. So one thing that I noticed when I looked into kiosk locations at uh, different shopping malls and outlet centers was, you know, taking into consideration the, you know, water and the electricity. And some of them said, uh, oh, well, we can put it under the ground, but we're gonna charge you to pull up all the tiles and break up the concrete to put in the water in and waste out and electricity. So for the water thing, obviously that, you know, didn't make sense. Uh, and I think that the way that you're doing it is definitely working better. And it seems like it's working good for you and you're gonna improve it over time, definitely. But he has an interesting thing that they've done for the electric at this unit. Um, they have put a electric that goes up in a tube and then it connects up to the very top. So that's not something that I would have even thought of, but I guess in this facility it works because that way no one's gonna trip over it. They didn't have to tear the floor up to put electric but it's going straight up and you don't need, I didn't even notice it until you kind of pointed it out. With the, all the tilings and uh, I mean, with the, all the water drainage, we spoke to the administration and they actually said it's gonna cost us over 50,000 pounds. And uh, for that reason, I mean, a lot of people were not trying to open a bubble tea chaos. They, they knew we need one here because there's not anyone close by. And I mean, that's why I mean, you see, we have got a lot of customers coming in. I mean, we are doing much better than what we would have thought. And that's actually given us a boost to even work harder. When they came and saw us and how we are working, they were actually shocked. We opened a month ago, you've improved a lot. Come back in six months time, it wouldn't be the same thing. And from what I understand, you haven't even really done any marketing yet. You only just started your Instagram right when you opened it, but you haven't done any like official marketing or social media or advertising. So like that's insane. Like you've been busy, you've been successful. All you did was you just put your kiosk up and of course people are just showing up. But now it's not just that, of course. Your drinks are good, your flavor's good. Um, you're using great recipes. You have a great team of people. And of course the kiosk looks nice. It's not just like, oh, here's a little kiosk, but like it has it's got really nice plants on it and good design. Got a menu. Are you gonna be getting a new menu soon? I know it's only been a month. You mentioned you only had your menu for two weeks now, so, yeah. but already you found yeah. there's some drinks that aren't selling. You wanna bring in different ones. So you're gonna yeah. look into getting a new menu and everything? First and foremost, thanks to you for, you know, cause you've been a reason for us opening this whole setup. And along the way you've helped, helped us quite a lot. I mean, I mean, we've overcome a lot of problems to your help. I mean. Every time if I needed help, I came back to you and you actually helped me with all of the stuff. And in terms of marketing, we haven't marketed anywhere. We've just been, it's been a week since we are on Instagram. I mean, uh, apart from that, the uh, turnout has been incredible. I mean, sometimes it actually goes out of control. It gets that busy. But I mean, along the time we learn with it, we grow and that's actually helping us. For the menu and everything, I mean, uh, most of the help that we've gotten is from Kristen, obviously. About the people, the, the customers, consumers choice, we actually tried the drinks and we tested them and they actually loved our drinks. I mean, one thing that we had to change was 
to lower down on the fructose level because here in this area, I mean, people found it quite sweet when he had the normal fructose level in here. So we had to cut down on that. I mean, now that we have to change our menu to a proper one, this has been quite helpful for us because it gave an idea. It gave us an idea. And right now, I mean, when we put up a new menu, it's going to be according to the people's choice. And obviously, I'm going to come back to you and ask you about everything. So you're going to help us with it. Our search for the new taste, new flavors is not going to stop. We are going to go after that. We're going to explore. We're going to travel everywhere to bring in more and more types of taste and everything. Our other menu, which we have created, uh, we'll put it in a few in a week or two weeks time. Uh, a lot of thoughts and a lot of work has gone into that. I mean, a lot of uh, opinions from the people, from the customers, which matter the most. Yeah, it's not like once you open the bubble tea store and that's it. You got to explore more ta more flavors. I mean, you got to ask people's flavors change. It's not like it, it, it just stays there. They get bored of one item for in some uh, along the time and then they want more and more flavors into it. Now that winters are coming in, we got to change some of the stuff as well. The other reason why uh, the flavors of the drinks are slightly different than like my recipes thing. And this is really important for everyone out there, whether you're watching my videos with my recipes or you're using uh, the manufacturers videos with their recipes. All products are not created equal. And I know I say this all the time. Some are more premium. Uh, some are more flavorful. Sometimes the flavor is just different. Some products are sweeter. Yeah. It's totally, totally different depending on what brand of supplier that you're using. You did a thing where you basically did side-by-side -side taste tests using the products that you decided to work with yeah. to kind of figure out, okay, this one needs more creamer, this one needs less, no fructose on these, we'll add a touch to those. And you basically worked it out for the products that you're using because you are using a wide variety. He's using syrups, fruit pulps, jams, powders, creamer-based drinks. Like you got all different kinds of things that you're mixing in together. So obviously uh, his recipes are gonna be very different than, you know, anyone else's. I've been to uh, many bubble tea shops. I mean, one is Bubble Sea Tea. And what they were doing was they would make their fruit teas, just pop, put the popping bowl, syrup, ice, tea in it, and just seal it and then shake it and give it to the customer. What we do is, I mean, obviously we want to add value to it. Right in front of the customer, we make the drinks, put it in the shaker, properly make it, shake it properly, put it in a glass for them, seal it for them. And with the milk teas, what we do differently is every single cup, we blend it inside a blender, which makes a big difference. This one, when it's blended properly, it's more creamier. It, it does emulsify, yeah, yeah. So that that's a very good point. I mean, we, we noticed it and Hence why, I mean, we are selling a lot of the majority of the milk teas. Well, that makes a lot of sense. That is definitely a piece of machinery that may or may not be required necessarily at a shop, but for you and the products that you're using and your technique and the flavor that he's going for, that is something that you found to be really successful for everything. Thank you for sharing that with us because, you know, it is, it is an item that most people wouldn't think uh, to use or or not need, so it's good to know. So I think the only thing that we wanted to kind of cover, which is super important for you, and of course all the viewers at home, is staffing. Would you mind sharing a little bit about some situations that have occurred, uh, things to look out for, and sort of how you're gonna handle things going forward? Within the first weeks, uh, f first two weeks, we had about six staff, and uh, all of them actually left. And that was mainly because of the water problem the uh, water drainage and you know bringing the fresh water in and then you know it was I mean they actually left on the same day they didn't even notify us a day or two days before so that was a big big problem and it's been a problem everywhere these days now so I mean uh, the f main thing is have proper staff in store train them and uh, before them joining in just tell them what they need to do here if they know what they're doing, they will just start working and they, if they agree with you. If they don't agree, you can go for other stuff. Yeah. From experience, a lot of people think that working at a bubble tea shop is just a fun, glamorous job. But guess what? It's a lot of work. So I think sometimes when staff come on, they expect something, they're given challenges, especially going back and forth to retrieve water, and they go, you know what? I didn't sign up for this. But if you tell them in advance, you are signing up for this. Yeah. That way they have nothing to complain about and quit about. Bubble tea is not only about just making tea and just giving it to the customer. It has a lot at the back. I mean, you've got to do a lot of things at the back. Even if it wasn't the water problem, 
there is still a lot to do at the back. If the staff know what they need to do, then obviously, I mean, they would sign up for it if they agree to it. If not, then you go, can go. I mean, right now, I've got a great team. They're very helpful. They're enjoying their work. Yeah, the team that you have that I've met today, they seem really great. They know what they're doing. They know it's a lot of hard work. And I think you were also mentioning in terms of logistics that some of the larger stuff like the boba cooker, the tea urns, those are cleaned over in the commissary area because the sink space here is quite small. Again, that means, you know, you need to transport things back and forth to the commissary area. But if the staff know in advance and they're hard workers and they're willing to, you know, get in and get their hands dirty, then it works out. So just something to keep in mind, I guess, when hiring future staff members. It would take us about an hour to finish off with everything, cleaning and then filling up with the clean water and dumping up the wastewater. But at the moment, it takes about 20 to 25 minutes which is, I mean, very good. I mean, we know what we're doing. Just before closing, one of the guy goes, he dumps in the wastewater, and uh, I mean, uh, the other one goes after that one is clean in here. So it's very easy at the moment. I mean, obviously there are challenges, it's not like as easy as where there, are, there is drainage system, but I mean, from the first day when we have started, we've come a long way. And within six months time, it's not gonna be like this, it's gonna be and I think one other thing to mention, which I totally forgot about, but then I remembered as you were talking, is the storage. So obviously you're not storing all of your stock and inventory here. There's somewhere else. Can you mention about that? Yeah, luckily we have storage system here at the shopping center where we can store our extra stuff. I mean, uh, we can't store everything over here at this kiosk of this size. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we have a storage system we are storing is just about one minute from here. We go anything we need at the start of the day, at the end of the day, we can bring back and forth. Yeah, that sounds really great because you don't have a shop yet. You might not know this, but when you have one, you know, when you get that big shipment in, there are boxes everywhere and stuff everywhere and you need space. You need space to store things, not just that, but the cups and the seals and all the product and random equipment that you need for backup. And there's just so much stuff that you have to have. And so obviously in a small little kiosk, there's not that much space to be able to store everything. So it's great that you have that so close. One more thing, if somebody wants to open a, boba, a bubble tea kiosk or a shop, it's not very straightforward or it's not as easy as people think it would be you need someone like Kristen as a mentor to help you with everything without her it would have been impossible for me I wouldn't have done anything I would have just left in the middle and quit it yeah but thanks to you thanks for all of the help that I got from you and along the time I mean if I need more I can I can go back to her anytime I'll go come back to you I give you a hard time, I'll take your time, and I'll need your help. And I will be here for you, Zubair. I mean, look, I just popped by, wanted to say hi, see how his shop is going, and I'm here for you, you know? That's just part of my job. It's what I enjoy doing. I enjoy being here for, for my clients. There's a lot of uh, changes coming to the chaos. First and foremost, we're waiting for the electric line, the other electric line to come in. As soon as that comes in, we'll put a, a top in fridge over here. And I also noticed that you have a really nice little social media area over here, which is great for pictures. Is that something you decided in advance or is that something you kind of added on later or how did that work? I didn't have any plans uh, to put this up here. We were not using this bit. We put it up here and this is one of the reasons a lot of customers are coming in because it actually, you know, grabs their attentions and they actually come here, they ask for what it is. I mean, when they find out this bubble tea, they get excited, they buy it, they love it, they come back over and over again. Marketing on social media, it's a free platform and it's super, super important. So if you can give your customers an opportunity to take a picture and post it as soon as they get their drink, and even better, pre-made social media area, it will do wonders. And as someone who does watch and see a lot of uh, drinks and posts and such on social media, Depending on the background, I know what shop that's from, right? If it got a logo, if it's got a certain style in the background, I generally can go, oh, I know where that drink is from. Whether, you know, even if it doesn't have it on the cup, I know. So yeah, that's really great that you have that. Okay, so we are almost done with this interview. Zubair, do you have any more final thoughts that you want to share with our viewers at home? Yeah, 100%. The, there's one thing that I've come across. I mean, I've been hearing from a lot of people that, oh, it's bubble tea business is going to die out soon. It's a very trendy thing and it's going to go away. I mean, something else is going to take it over it but trust me it's not it's it's not gonna die out it will evolve you will have a bubble tea store kiosk 
around the corner for opening you can just go with the standard menus recipes from the internet Kristen has got the one of the best recipes I've, I've, I've ever seen you just don't stop there you've got to create your own recipes you've got to travel you've got to check out other places you've got to check out the customers choice the consumers choice and then you've got to come up with more and more your own recipes and that is going to bring you a lot of customer and one more thing it's not going to die out if you want to get into bubble tea business there's a lot of hard work but it's worth it 100 percent. it's worth it and you've got to have Kristen as your mentor thank you i appreciate that that's very kind of you zubair thank you very much well i am so grateful that you've invited us to come visit your kiosk today again just one month in where he's at and learning about all of the hurdles that you were overcoming to continue your way to success with everything. I mean, you're already successful, but there's only more success to come. So that's great. Thank you so much. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you again soon. Take care.